Well, it's a busy week, so let's get straight to it. Clifford Bennett from ACY Securities is joining us now to tell us his trades of the week. Clifford, love having you on the show. Look, where do we start? Because it was such a wild ride on Friday, wasn't it, in those US equity markets. So maybe let's have a look at the US S&P 500. Are we sitting at key levels at the moment? Hi, Cara. Yes, it's uh, been a very big week or two. And uh, I said at the start of the year in the first week when we first had that little rally, uh, it wouldn't be the first time that U.S. equities have had their top for the year or their low for the year in that first week of trading. Uh, and I think that's a scenario that people should consider here. This may not be a one, two week correction. It might be a six, 12 month correction. And people have to be aware of that risk. Now, you know, with markets, no one actually really knows where they're going. But, you know, over time, we try to develop our skills. And I just would suggest to people that, that they take that kind of uh, risk on board. I just wanted in that chart there to show the daily chart of the US 500, just to show why I think there really is reasonable risk down towards 4,000. That's 4050 for the US 500. Um, and there's no doubting that we've had a, a first way, you know, and if people are out there are Elliott Wave specialists, it's pretty obvious, uh, one, two, three, and we all know the third wave is always the biggest in a new trend, but we don't know just from uh, an Elliott Wave perspective uh, if this is a third wave or a C wave. In other words, a C wave could be a bottom of a correction, but I think it's the third wave, and I think the third wave still has further to go. So it's third of one of five lower potentially here, uh, particularly when I put in back of that price action uh, some very bearish fundamental developments all around the world. We all know inflation is, for want of a better word, ripping higher. Uh, we all know, well, we should know, if you don't know, um, out there, consumer confidence in the United States, China, Europe is plummeting. Uh, retail sales in the US recently contracted. They're not growing, they're contracting. And everyone always says, look over the valley. But the problem is the valley is a long, deep ocean. Uh, so I'd be very cautious of expecting any, we'll see volatility, we'll see some bounces, but I don't think we're going to see as good a bounce as we used to see when they were just corrective patterns. I think this is a new impulsive trend lower for US equities. So rather than just being cautious, Clifford, would you be willing to jump on this trade now and actually get short, short at the moment? I've been, I've been selling for some time, Cara. <laughs> I, sold, I sold too early and I, I've licked wounds, and uh, but I've been very aggressive selling this down move. I've been advising people uh, personally, uh, and I don't mind doing that. Um, you know, everyone tries to shy away from that, but I'm prepared to go out there. Um, I, you know, I've just advised, uh, I think it was... Uh, Several months ago now on an Ausbiz show, I said, if you're very wealthy, take all your chips off the table. There's no point. If you're uh, just wealthy, take half your chips off the table. And if you're soon to be wealthy, it was time to get very aggressive about active trading, active trading up or down, uh, and particularly with an eye for exactly this kind of move. For instance, um, you know, personally, I sold um, after pay at 124.97 nearly 125 uh, and rode it all the way down. So I saw signs of uh, tulip bulb markets very early on. I called it early, uh, but I think this sort of price action and the economic developments that we're seeing now are worried. Just one quick point on the economic developments. In 1929, I'm not saying we're having another Great Depression or anything, but in 1929, as a clue, manufacturing slowed savagely in the United States well before the stock market. Manufacturing was, factory activity was falling, stock market kept going, totally regardless of the fundamentals. I think we've seen a similar thing happen just here. And around the world at the moment, manufacturing is slowing. Uh, factory activity is waning. And so I think the stock market is doing a quick turnaround to catch up with a much lower Wall Street reality, or main, sorry, Main Street reality than Wall Street um, ivory tower types would want us to believe. So Clifford, what does this mean then for the local market if we look at the ASX 200 levels that you'd be looking out for? Uh, yes, I think, well, we're sitting right on the edge of a cliff here and the fall could be significant. And I don't mean from the top of my head to the base of my shoes. Uh, I mean a uh, kind of uh, Blue Mountains or Grand Canyon type cliff. 
Um, basically, you should see that first movement there is a crumbling towards the edge, and we haven't actually, excuse me, we haven't actually had the fallers yet. So I'm thinking 6,800 on the AUS 200 is a distinct possibility. We could be in for worse than that. We could be, we could stop around, you know, sort of 6,900. But I think if we break the immediate support of the last one to two days, uh, this is a market that's in serious trouble. And of course, that's likely to happen in parallel with the US 500 index breaking down. So if you see new lows again in the US 500, and I think you will, um, then this market's really going to be giving up quite a bit. Because remember, there's been a lot of bullish sentiment in the Australian market um, on these false beliefs about some kind of Nirvana Australian economic future. Um, we were below trend growth before the pandemic hit. We had the world's highest per capita stimulus, which gave us a short boost to economic data. And now the outlook going forward is particularly, well, I won't say dire, but it's very subdued. Uh, and all of this time we've been alienating our biggest trading partner. So it doesn't matter what your political uh, views are on that. The reality is we have been alienating our biggest trading partner and that is going to hurt us going forward. So both internally and externally, the Australian economy is actually been screaming signs of being in trouble, whilst everyone in the market, particularly the funds management industry, just went, no, it'll all be okay, it's going to be fantastic. You just keep buying every dip. And people are learning at the moment, as they're learning in Bitcoin and other cryptos, that this whole nonsense of you only ever buy the dip, it's a complete misnomer. I mean, in 1929, it took uh, the Dow Jones 25 years to get back to the same level. So this idea that no matter what happens, you just buy is, I think, a complete waste of space and time because what you could be doing is hedging your portfolio, trading short even, making some money on the downside and then being in a, uh, an accelerated, empowered position to take advantage of what will become too cheap asset prices over the next six to 12 months, if that bearish scenario of mine is right. If I'm wrong, um, you know, if we rally halfway back the fall of the last week, I'm probably wrong. Uh, but for the moment, the pre selling pressure seems to be building. People seem to be grasping the concept. And I'm not one of those people who says the Fed's going to, I, I mean, I'm the most aggressive forecaster in the world on the Fed raising rates. Uh, Goldman just up there forecast four today, four hikes this year. We've had five hikes since the start of the year, so they'll probably join us soon. But I'm very aggressive on that. That's not why I want to sell equities. I want to sell equities because they're overvalued in the real state of the real economy for real people, real businesses out there in the world in both the United States and Australia is a, a lot more of a struggle than equity prices are perceiving. And that struggle isn't going to go away when the pandemic goes away. There's been a lot of long-term economic damage. I hope, I hope I keep everyone up. <laughs> yeah, Clifford, we're running out of time, but I do want to get your views on the Australian dollar because I know you've been bearish for some time, but we are expecting rate hikes. So is it now a race between the Fed and the RBA? Uh, no, I don't think it's a competition. I think, you know, the Fed's one of the slower central banks in the world and the RBA isn't even in that race. Um, so I think we're sort of performing on the practice track somewhere, maybe. Um, so, yes, the Fed will be hiking more aggressively before the RBA and we're running out of time, so I won't go on too much. Look at that chart there. If that support, if that starts to break down, it's very easy for the Australian dollar to go back down to 65 cents. And we've been much lower. I myself traded the Australian dollar at 48 and a half cents. So 65 cents is not an out of this world forecast. And I think that is the risk for the Australian dollar. And just before you go, I know you've been pretty bullish on gold as a hedge. Are we still looking good? It's had a pretty good month, hasn't it? Yes. And, uh, you know, it's a long term price structure there. Well, I'm talking of, see, that's a weekly chart and it's a lovely com consolidation period looking to break higher. We're still going to be volatile and sideways because remember, that is a weekly chart. But that big picture risk there to the upside says two thousand, two and a half thousand, three thousand, three and a half thousand dollars gold over the next two to three years. So keep steady acquisition is the way to go for gold, especially when people become disappointed about global growth moving forward, which they will, uh, as inflation continues to spiral upwards out of control.